Hey guys, Toro here, bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Road to Kharkov. Playing for you today, spawning in the south is Godfather and Ziz. Godfather is more commonly known as Lemon. And Ziz, I'm not entirely sure who this is. Rumor is that Brad from Relic, but I cannot confirm or deny that. So, there you have it. These guys are currently ranked 19 as allies. In the north we have Sully and Stark. These guys have got a lot of experience together. We've got double OKW. There's double Brits. These guys are rank uh, 11 as Axis. We've actually been matching up against uh, not this particular team, but Sully teaming up with Black Corp, who is uh, actually the rank 1 Axis team at the moment, and they've been giving me a tune-up, that's for sure. So this should be a good match between uh, two of the top teams in the world. I imagine we will be seeing artillery cover from uh, one of these two players. Looks like we do have tactical support in both of their loadouts. But it will be interesting to see how these uh, British players get through the early game. That seems to be where they struggle. Once those loops hit the field, that's when uh, OKW okay, can really take hold of the match. So we're seeing a trench here from Godfather. A good positioning as well. I mean, he can drop an EMG in there and he'll have a nice arc covering this approach. May actually be able to range that garrison from there as well. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to wait and see. Also, we see Ziz has rushed an MG into this garrison here. This is a very important garrison to hold on to. Doesn't have that many windows coming out of this direction, but it doesn't really matter when it's MG. It looks like we have a Kubel now going for the cutoff. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take but one of our points. Godfather perhaps expecting this has a support of uh, infantry sections there. And to construct a new pushes that back pretty quickly. Finished. Looks like a soft retreat here from Godfather, just trying to reposition, doesn't want to engage those Vox behind heavy cover, we'll definitely lose that one. We, it looks like we may have, no, partially constructed wire trap there on that door. Interesting. Looks like Ziz is now trying to make a push forwards. Does have that all-knowing eye, aka the MG in this house. There is a lot of sight blocker here though, because of these trees. So, students are safe to approach and almost gets that wipe there. Hit the head around that hedge briefly and almost got that infantry section. Lucky escape there from Ziz. So it looks like Stark. He's going with a medic truck, so maybe Sully is going to be going with the mechanized regiment. And probably going to be getting out that Luke's. Overall though, pretty static game so far. Not much has uh, really occurred. Everybody just building up their defenses. And look at that AOE suppression there. I mean, that squad is a mile away from that Kubel. Still manages to get suppressed there. Was uh, rather unusual. Oh, squad here making its way for the cutoff, and it's going to be successful. Fire! Lemon now rotating to deal with that. Either way, pretty good pickup there. Oh, we see a mortar emplacement going down here for Lemon. Interesting choice. The way I usually see it is that. Uh, in 2v2s, if you can get the mortar pit down and keep it alive throughout the whole game, generally you'll win. But if your opponents can push it down, generally you'll lose. So that's just uh, from my play experience how I found things go. <laughs> oh, in fact, we've got two mortar pits now. One coming up from Ziz. Oh, this could be trouble. It's quite a forward mortar pit here, and. Uh, Luckily there are no squads nearby and uh, that flame grenade's already gone off on that garrison so he can't actually do anything about that right now. But still a pretty uh, pretty good defensive line here from the bridge place. 
Oh, what a bit raining death down there, almost getting that wipe. Did not switch targets though with this infantry section. May have got the wipe if he had done so. Looks like this squad's making a rush forward. Probably going to try to throw a flame grenade on that mortar pit. There it goes. The enemy are attacking an emplacement. Doing a little bit of damage. comes another push this time is no he's not gonna make a run for the mortar pit he's just gonna go for the trench instead that was a bit of a waste of a grenade there I think and this is where double locator you can run into some issues I think we're gonna need to see some infantry support guns from Stark and we haven't okay here we go now he's got one under construction Support gun Nobody is still the best counter for OKW. Gets mortar pits and oh my god, look at that! That thing's off to a good start. Five kills already. How's this one doing? Three kills. The mortar pits uh, doing a pretty good job so far. Sully very late on his uh, vehicle construction. Makes me wonder if he's just going to save for a walking Stuka instead of going for Luke's. I feel like this is perhaps a slight mistake. An emplacement is being attacked. There's only one AT gun at the moment, so that Luke's would really run roughshod over the allies here, but... Looks like that may be what he's doing, saving for the Stuka. The problem is, Stuka is so easy to hear, it makes such a loud noise when it barrages. That, uh... These these water placements can just brace and then not much you can do about it. Do very little damage. So there we go, brace going on the mortar emplacement after that flame grenade. The other one working hard trying to get this folk squad out of here. Big push here from the Axis. Looks like he's trying to duck in and out of this building as the mortar shells land. Not a good, I mean, a pretty good trick there. I wonder what the status is on his grenades. No, his grenades still only halfway cooled down. Cooled down and those quite long, so. Oh, there we go. Down goes one mortar pit. So, a pretty big blow there for Ziz. The other one, though, in a much more defensive spot position and now it's got a forward assembly in front of it so it's going to make it quite hard to shoot at that with uh, even AT guns. It's got the trench kind of covering it from one angle and the forward assembly from the other so it's going to be actually quite hard to shoot at. And of course that forward assembly does give this a bonus. Yeah it increases its rate of fire. I believe that's how it goes. Yeah fire faster. Yep. Point is being overrun. So you don't actually need to put a squad in there to get that bonus because of that forward assembly. So that's interesting play here from Godfather. I mean, uh, I feel like I've been switching back and forth between those two. Also got to see some of these uh, pyrotechnic supplies dropped here on the center. Base house is putting a bit of fire down on the center trying to stop that cap. So we see Ziz has uh, selected his doctrine. He is going for tactical support, and Godfather has gone for special weapons. It's a pretty good combination. You're going to have the uh, artillery cover combined with the crocodile, of course. The uh, concentrated fire operation is pretty good for knocking down OKW HQ. So this is a pretty good composition to battle against OKW. So we see the double infantry support guns barraging the heck out of this position here. And there's only one squad of engineers at the moment, so they're going to have a bit of trouble keeping that alive. He needs to get his squads up there and try and uh, put some pressure on them so they have to retreat. But there's MG34 covering it, and maybe oh, he's going to get around the side, perhaps. No, almost. Unfortunately, not. Maybe this is going to go down here. Infantry support guns blasting away. Looks like this had to pull back into the garrison. 
and uh, now the mortar pit's returning fire and Chris Borgen has to back away and now this one's also in the firing line here come some royal engineers closing in and it looks like that mortar pit is going to survive oh what he's gone for Luke's now this is it this is like an incredibly late Luke's and, and at the same time pretty much the exact same time is bringing out Stuka so these are some I mean, this looks could have been out for such a long time, and this is only just recently getting an AT gun. Now, uh, he could. I mean, <laughs> this is just uh, boggles the mind. I don't understand why he goes looks so late. He was a bit strapped for manpower earlier, and the looks is quite expensive. I believe it's 315 manpower. But still, it's very uh, odd to go that vehicle this late in the game. Looks like Stuka is uh, about lining up a shot. We've got a very defensive Shui here, but this isn't the worst place to put it because sometimes your opponent can jump into this garrison and uh, they cap their your fuel and then they jump into this garrison. It's very hard to recapture their fuel from underneath that. Nice opening Stuka barrage there, clears out the MG. Puts a bit of pressure on this AT gun as well. Looks like, oh, the mortar pit did go down at some point. I imagine that that was to those double infantry support guns. Completely missed that, I'm sorry. So now, British have lost a lot. I mean, what was that? MG, two mortar pits. Some uh, pretty heavy losses so far. They have suffered. Let's look at this so low, the structure so low as well. One more shot, and that building's going down. Oh, and there it goes. Now there's so almost nothing left. His army is just a minuscule fraction of anything. It's, it's so small right now. Look at the Cromwell rolling out, though, and these things are so devastating. It's probably the most potent medium tank in the game at the moment. So cheap. 110 fuel, so fast, ray crushing, good main gun. Here we go, we see them trying to crush these squads and pushing back everything right now. I don't think we have a Raketan for either player, so they're really powerless against this uh, double Cromwell push here. And they're going all the way to base, it looks like they're trying to kill this infantry support gun. We're kind of running the risk of running over some uh, shoe mines here. But luckily, haven't been any so far. One thing I have noticed when playing against uh, some of the Black Corp, they do put down a lot of shoe mines. I would not feel safe doing this maneuver. Kind of lucky though that there are no Rakettans, of course. Looks like these guys did kind of arrange this build. We see a lot of Stuka recharge bulletins and or Sully, so it looks like that's part of their build. Oh. Now this Duke Barrage there does minor damage to these two squads. Sort of spacing on those rockets, quite quite large. Kind of lucky for the allies. An engineer unit is ready for action. Our capture point. That's right. Cromwell's got off to a pretty good start. We've got five kills on this one, six kills on this. Oh, this could be trouble. Six pounder maybe about to go down to these overs. Uh oh, this switch targets to the construction. Or the in construction uh, mortar pit there. I'm being slightly more defensive right now. I'm not too sure why. There's only one Shrek here. They can take quite a lot of Shrek shots. Probably would have been a good idea to try and chase off those overs now. Somewhat early retreat. Looks like these squads coming in on the flank. Threatening those squads from Stark, so he had to get out of there. Oh, there he goes in for the crush on the Obers. Very low, and he gets the white. Nicely done there. I think a bit of inattentiveness here from Stark. Cost him that squad. Oh, he's going for a follow-up. And that's just a mass retreat. These Cromwell are so devastating at the crush. Kind of like the M10. So speedy and so good at crushing squads. And these two Brit players are taking full advantage of that.
Still, uh, still no recusants from e uh, from uh, either. Oh, in fact, no. Here's here's one for Stelly, Stelly, but no, none for Stark so far. But he does have a Panzer IV coming out, and because of their high armor, should win a face-to-face -face duel against Cromwell. Oh, but there he goes, he runs right into a six pounder Cromwell, also getting some good shots in. And uh, once again, the walking Stuka not really getting that many kills. Six kills so far, three barrages. And it's uh, not, <laughs> I mean, two kills a barrage. It's uh, not very good if you compare that to, say, the Panzerwehr for the Calliope. But that said, a lot of people think that the Panzerwehr from the Calliope are pretty overpowered, and I would tend to agree with them, so perhaps that's not the best metric to measure them against. So we see the Brits with a commanding map control situation right now. We've got a triple cap running, got a lot of those uh, you know, standard resource points. And they've just got a swarm of Cromwells. I think they've both got two Cromwells each. We now have a uh, command universal carrier. This is more of a recon place. Now it's people all by himself here with a Shrek squad, but this is four Cromwells. And down it goes. The kittens were just uh, not close enough, and down goes that Shrek squad as well. The kittens out of position. No way to stop these marauding Cromos, and they're ripping through everything right now. Mission accomplished right there, killing that Panzer IV and uh, not taking any losses in return. And you can kind of uh, to make those more aggressive plays when you've got those recon plays you know where stuff is and I believe those recon plays can reveal camouflage for kittens as well so I knew exactly what they're doing there that wasn't that risky the only real risk was uh, running over a shoe mine but uh, I don't think we've seen any of those planted so far this game So it looks like Stark has been hit the hardest, he's lost his Obers, he's lost uh, most of his infantry, he's lost one of his uh, infantry support guns, he's really hit in only 36 population size. Sully's in a much better spot of course at 81. But uh, he's gone heavily into buildings from tier 3 of the mechanized regiment. So he's probably going to have to tech up soon. That being said, look at this, he's got the Fox Squad with the MG34. This is everybody's worst nightmare. And that uh, extra durability of the uh, extra squad member makes it very hard to kill. And that the DPS on the MG34 is really what makes Ogre so good. And that is retained. And it transfers over to these Fox Rangers. Looks like the Cromwells are back up to full health, re or at least our Zizzas are. Lemon's still receiving some repairs. I wonder what we're seeing in terms of tech here. No. Doesn't look like either of them have tech to hammer or anvil yet. At this point it can be good to go for the bolster as burst forces then you get that extra extra man in your royal engineer squads and that can uh, speed up your repairs on your tanks that's a nice trick especially if you're not going to get uh, the anvil heavy, heavy engineers that's uh, really important to speed up the repairs of your tanks especially when you're going out uh, tactical support and you don't have that uh, Smoke repair ability. It's 
so another Stuka Barrage nicely dodged there by Zis. And that Stuka really hasn't been a big factor this game. Allies have been dodging those very effectively so far. See quite a lot, I mean the Puma has been on the field for quite a while now but it hasn't done any, anything and I can kind of understand why, I mean in the face of uh, three or four chromos that thing would die almost instantly. I don't think that that was a very good fuel purchase at all, probably should have tried to tech up. Oh, it looks like that Shrek got picked up by an infantry section. And uh, a mine there. I'm not sure whose mine that was, but it got detonated. Oh, they managed to clear that rocket in there. The rocket in front open up. Oh, missed it. Looks like uh, the Puma went down, in fact. The both was back in now as well. As I say, that thing is so, so, so uh, dies so easily. It looks like Sully's gonna try save up now for the command panther. That's a good choice. No, that wasn't. What, what was that? Was that the Kubel? Oh, well, it was the Kubel. Okay. Never mind that. Of course, the Kubel's gonna die too, Cromwell. It looks like uh, Lemon did go for the weapon upgrades and he has equipped his infantry sections with Breens. This is somewhat risky because at Vet 3 infantry sections do gain that uh, scoped infields. I believe they get two scoped infields and it means you're much more likely to drop. Oof. Oh, that was a big one. Holy shit, I think that wiped one squad, almost wiped two others. That's the Stuka shot that Sully's been waiting for and all of a sudden he's got 18 kills. So there must have been 12 kills in the last two barrages so uh, he's definitely picked up the pace there. Ooh, we see Yagpanzer for Stark. Yeah, that's a good choice actually. A pretty good rate of fire, shouldn't have too much trouble penetrating with Cromwell's armour. You've got that IR searchlight there providing sight of these Oh no, but he's got he's got to expose the rear armor of the Yagpanzer to this huge push of Cromwells. Looks like we've got artillery co coming in now. It mobilizes that Panzer too. Looks like it's also disabled the gun of this. No, no, that's going to die. They need to move a millimeter further back. Oh, it looks like he took some friendly fire though from the artillery cover. That is why you don't want to get too close to your opponent's tanks when it's going off you can also get hit by the artillery cover all this stuff getting main gun disabled by the artillery cover they're just too close to that ability Cromwell's going deep this thing's still getting pummeled by the artillery cover Cromwell's on the hunt for the command panther nope oh but a <laughs> mine there gets detonated kills the puma the Egg Panzer 4, this thing has been main gun disabled the entire fight. Is he going to move back into the artillery cover now? A lot of pits now coming from the side and down goes the Egg Panzer. Where is the Command Panther? Okay, that's over there. Looks like it killed the Cromwell over here. Artillery cover is now over. Looks like that Cromwell got away on uh, extremely low. Oh no, that, that one ended up dying down here. What was that? Three Cromwells down in exchange for a Jagdpanzer Puma. There's a rather splendid Cromwell ready to go. Is that it? Luke's as well. Not sure. Probably close to even trade there. That being said. Allies in a very good map control situation, so I think that's probably worth it just just for that reason alone. They got that triple cap running access to starting to feel the pressure. Lost their fuel, it's been disconnected. Oh, nice Stuka barrage there, wipes that squad. Oh, here comes the crumble. <laughs> retreat. Here's another retreat. 
Well, had to back up to full now. This thing is the Axe's best weapon against what the Allies are currently fielding, but you've got to remember those Piets. They are no joke. Not too troubling though against a very mobile tank like the Panther. It can be hard to land them unless your opponent's really good with the attack rounds, but against uh, slower tanks like the King Tiger and or just the regular Tiger, those Piets are very deadly. Mainly because their deflection damage is so high, that means if a shot doesn't penetrate what damage it does, and uh, the pierce damage is, I think it's 40? So, uh, it's a pretty, pretty high amount of damage for a non-penetrating shot, and that's why they're so potent at the moment. Also got very good range. Not a lot of players are using them to outrange the Schwer HQ and actually knock that out. And a push. Of course, losing your Shrek screw is so devastating. In fact, I think it's exactly what happened to uh, Stark. He lost his Shrek screw right there. So he's unable to make any more tanks. And now the Axe is really on the ropes here. A few Pierce connects with the Panther, forcing that back. And we've got some pyrotechnic supplies coming down here. This house is about to open up. Here comes Cromwell's from the side. This squad looks like it's going to be white. Yep, down it goes. Base house is doing a little bit of damage here. Nothing too, uh, too intimidating though. A capture point is being overrun. See this Ford Assembly getting extremely low on health. Probably do with a repair. It'd be a shame to lose that thing. Oh, Command Panther engaging Cromwell's on the side. He's activated the uh, Mark Vehicle like ability it has. What's that called? Coordinated fire. Cromwell's instantly decided to disengage. Oh, we've got artillery cover coming down as well. I missed that. Trying to suppress all these squads. Make life a bit easier for these Cromwell's. Try and push here. Yeah, I must have missed that uh, HQ going down. Is that... Uh oh! Command Panther comes in and luckily dodges a bit of artillery cover fire there. We see auto smoke coming down from the artillery cover covering those low health tanks. And uh, we can see Stark's really been the one suffering. His uh, army size this entire game has been so far behind. So he's still in a decent spot of course with that command panther but could very easily be overwhelmed by his uh, Cromwells. Looks like he wants to get put one up here. Gets one, nicely done there. And disengage after that. So these Cromwells coming in from the side perhaps want to get a bit of revenge. Command Panther has pulled back. Maybe hoping to get a bit of Cromwell damage in there as well. And, uh, one of those infantry sections on that push also went down. Well, the Axis uh, starting to steady the ship slightly after suffering so many losses. They've got two VPs under their control. Oh, looks like we're going to see a second Stuka from Sully. This is a weird play, but I suppose he figures he cannot. I mean, it'd be too expensive at this point in the game to try and tick up. And they can't make any other tanks. Oh, we've got coordinated fire with Pack 43 almost one shotting this Cromwell. Oh, the Panther misses the follow up shot there. But nice, sir, uh, that Pack 43 really catching those Cromwells up. Almost uh, wiping it there. 
course we've got that command universal carrier there providing the recon that was where the shrill went down I forgot I forgot he put it over here once again though it's out on the side and it could be quite hard to rotate in time if all four Cromwells head over here they could kill this thing very very quickly Perhaps the safer spot will be more over in this direction, because then you might also be able to cover this cutoff. Either way, here we go. Stark has put down that, and we can see that uh, Sully continues to use this coordinated fire ability. Try to keep these Cromwells at bay. It looks like the boat was just went down there. Another one over here now. <laughs> nice to see the emplacements getting some use here. Oh, so, oh, that was coordinated fire. I mean, uh, concentrated fire there dropped on the uh, Pack 43. Cleared that out. A new engineer section is waiting for orders. So this uh, this composition seems to be working out pretty well for the uh, first players. Perhaps highlighting the strength of the Cromwell here. Maybe causing these OKW players a big hitter. Enemy threatening a capture point. Cromwell's so nimble can threaten to crush those uh, Shrek squads. Counters the uh, everything from the mechanized regiment quite effectively. And of course these two commanders in unison seem to be doing a pretty good job. We have uh, zeroing artillery now being brought down by Stark, and this is very potent artillery, but it requires stuff to actually be inside that circle, and of course you also have sight in that circle, so all that was really useful there is to clear out that Bofors. Very expensive, but it's worth it. Almost going deep, trying to knock out the Command Panther. Oh, but it misses again. Oh, and then the Cromwells connect with two nice shots there. The tables are turned here, now the Panther's in trouble. Looks like this one's gone to try back away. No, here comes in another Cromwell for some uh, reinforcements. But everything's bouncing off this Panther. There was three or four shots in a row there. Found the skates away to safety. Oh, they run over a mine. Looks like one Cromwell did go down. Command Panther's still in trouble. Duke is also in trouble. Artillery cover coming in right on the Axis base almost. This is a devastating spot for it to go down here. Very hard for the Axis to do anything while this is rolling on. And look, he's in his base. This artillery cover covers such a huge area. It's just wrecking his command pet in his base. Finally gets clear of its arc. But uh, it's kind of an issue where it only really shows on the mini-map. As you can see, it doesn't really show that on the tactical map or on the ground so I think they need to show the actual uh, circle like they did on well, the zeroing artillery as we saw just before oh I was wondering where those were going down ok clears out that MG but how much he can do there Cromwell Force away that MG. A lot of team weapons lying on the battlefield. This has been a crazy war. This Cromwell's trying to look back to safety. What is that? Oh, Jagpans, a fresh Jagpans are trying to knock out this Cromwell here. Just needs one more shot to penetrate and he will succeed. But he's got to go around that shot blocker, maybe. No. Cromwell trying to flank it. Here we go. The Egg Panther's in a lot of trouble with Shriek squads and the Command Panther. Oh, nice use of coordinated fire there. And that Cromwell dies so quickly. I believe that uh, increases the damage it takes by 30%. Maybe, maybe more than that. Maybe it's 40%. Something like that. I believe that's how it works. Doesn't it, I don't I don't think it increases the chance to penetrate. Though. 
just, uh, just increases the damage. He's got one of those uh, bases, those these are forward observation posts. But let's see where it is. I'm not sure where that strength even came. Oh, it must have been hold the line strength. Yeah. I saw that on cooldown, but I didn't hear that. I see anybody use that? Probably see why they're easily dodged by that command paper. Oh, here comes another stick brush. Is it just me or are no, those stick brushes in order? Three types of someone's in. Oh, look at this Command Panther and Yoke Panther 4 making short work of that Cromwell. So Shrek from the behind. Oh, but in comes another artillery cover. Both these tanks now in big trouble. Probably going to take engine damage. They're quick to react though. They've seen this trick before. Cromwell's making big plays, trying to push them back. Cromwell coming in from the side now. I mean, the Yak has is really defenseless when it has its main gun disabled. So this Cromwell took a bit of friendly fire there. It goes down. This one also taking friendly fire. His main gun disabled. Somehow they're still getting shot here. They must be on the edge of the uh, radius of that ability. Once again, using the coordinated fire on this Cromwell is getting very low. Jack Panzer IV is trying to come in, trying to get the killing blow. Cannot though, he rounds around the shock blocker. Is he going to try chase under artillery cover? Very risky maneuver here by this Jack Panzer. Wants to kill the Cromwell. Misses the shot though. And now he could be in trouble. Sitting under that artillery cover. No, you can't, you can't, you, I mean, you can't chase with the Yak Panzer. The Cromwell we're talking about. Extremely speedy tank. We've got another Stuka rocket barrage there targeting the, the Pier squad. Which is our appearing up that comet now. Is this? We're finally seeing him take up. If we look at the VP situation, we see the Allies Infantry are in the lead right now. 233 to, to uh, just over 100 for the Axis. So. Axis are definitely feeling the strain here, and uh, Allies do have better map control right now. Oh, nice Stuka though. Did a lot of damage to that Comet. That thing's going to be uh, here for a long time. In fact, the Command Panthers chase, try and chase it down here. Size not to chase, there could be mines around here, very likely a chance. Also, it could be a million comet, I mean, uh, Cromwell's coming in from the side. Doesn't want to take that risk. That thing's up to VET 3 now, though. What's this kill count like? Four vehicles destroyed. It's uh, pretty impressive for any tank to get four vehicles destroyed. Cromwell's forcing all sorts of retreats with the threat of the crush. Okay, for now rotating to try and push them back. Oh, but we've got quite a lot of pits here. He's got to be careful. And just to dodge almost all of those, though. Oh, he's got... What does he do? He's going in for the crush on these pit squads. Very risky play there. Oh, the, the pits missed, though. Unlucky. Looks 
also Cromwell com combo. Some more C's on this side of the map. Looks like they try to Maybe we're gonna try to flank around. No, we got another artillery cover being dropped in here in the Stuka. It looks like it's just outside the arc and uh access is push pulling back. I'm not gonna get caught out by that trick once again. This artillery cover is so potent. You actually see the allies have gone for fuel caches rather than um caches. Sometimes you see that it's banned. Uh, Brits to try and uh, make sure you can use this artillery cover as many times as possible but it looks like they've gone for fuel cash to try and spam those Cromwells instead. Also a pretty good strategy as we can see. And once again artillery cover buying the Brits players a lot of map control. that they're getting that triple cap running BPs for the uh, allies getting extreme I mean the axe is getting extremely low now they're very feeling the pressure Ready for 39 kills on this Stuka that's pretty pretty impressive only three on this one I think this is a pretty fresh one though it's like it's got a lot of veterancy though it means it's done a lot of damage probably to that comet before He's oh no, throwing down some uh, pyrotechnics again on that fire. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Okay, we have oh, we've got a lot of Cromwells coming in from this, down this flank. He's got to be careful. His command panther is heavily outnumbered. Watch the shots bouncing though, and it looks like he's going to back away. push on both flanks here by the allies and this may be what they need to try and split up these two tank destroyers and uh, maybe try to outmaneuver them with their more nimble tanks oh no command panther's in big trouble here two cromwells if one more penetrates and it does it penetrates and down goes command panther 225 fuel he's still such a long way away from being able to call in another one of those and they're probably going to run out of VPs before we can afford another command panther so that that may be it I mean, that was a vet fort command panther crushing blow there kind of lucky as well well I suppose yeah kind of lucky that those both those shots penetrated okay interesting choice start going for another puma Looks like he lost his HQ again to uh, I want I saw that on cooldown, but I didn't notice it. Looks like he lost his uh, HQ again to another coordinated concentrated fire operation, rather. And that's why I was saying, you know, it's quite hard to defend it when it's all the way over here in this corner. And here would have been a slightly safer location. It's so crushing if as OKW you lose your HQ. It's 120 fuel. And uh, in 2v2s it seems to be so it's quite easy to push those. You just, you know, draw your opponent to one side of the map, both your opponents to one side of the map. And then your one guy can sneak in there, maybe get a good off map on it, and a couple of shots from a tank or an AT gun, and that's it. That's all it takes to knock it out. So we have three, four Cromwells rather. Another artillery cover coming in. Jackpans is desperately trying to jump away, but this is so many Cromwells. I don't know if he can do anything. Oh, and that takes engine damage right in the edge of the circle. Down goes the boom, as I was saying, that was a big waste of fuel. Both of the Stukas go down. That's gonna be it. There's just nothing to stop all these Cromwells. If 
without that command pack. But Pan's just trying to get over there to try and help, but he's so slow right now. We're in the base, and this could be an annihilation victory right now for all these Cromwells. No, nope, we're gonna play it safe. No, nope, in, in comes the Comet and the Cromwell from the side. <laughs> and the Comets come back in for another round. That is everything dead. <laughs> So where to go wrong? I think Sully perhaps made a mistake going for that look so late in the game. Uh, the positioning of the Shure HQs may be slightly risky, especially when you're up against a commander with concentration, concentrated fire operation. And that really set him back, allowed for a critical mass of Cromwells to accumulate and uh, Axis never really managed to grind their way back into the game after that, unfortunately. They just kept losing those HQs and uh, they kept their armor production down to a minimum. Anyway, well played and uh, interesting to see double British forces in, uh, in full effect there. And uh, pretty much 100% pretty much due to artillery cover, I'm not going to lie. But also some nice uh, Cromwell plays there. Anyway guys, I'll wrap on that. If you'd like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.